Hello and welcome to another exam paper walkthrough. Uh, I'm carrying on with my AQA series uh, that I started a fortnight ago. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at the June 18 paper, paper 2H. Um, there's a copy of the paper. Uh, in the description to this video you'll find a link to a Google Drive that will take you directly to the paper. Uh, I would strongly recommend you uh, have either done the paper beforehand or you do it alongside the video. Um, uh, to get the most out of the video, um, please feel free to have some music on in the background. I tend to have some music on while recording these videos, um, so uh, you're more than welcome to. Um, this is an AQA pass paper. Um, this is only the odd questions. So uh, the video that I recorded a fortnight ago was the even questions. Uh, this one is now the odd questions. So uh, if you put them both together, you will get the complete paper. Um, I hope you find this video useful. Uh, please do subscribe if you like. Right, before I get on to the paper, I just want to talk about the breakdown of the paper. Uh, so this is uh, from the question level analysis uh, data from when the paper was actually sat. Uh, so as you can see, I've trimmed it down to just the odd questions. Uh, so the maximum mark for this paper is 42. Uh, the national mean mark for this paper was 20.9. Uh, and uh, uh, it gives you very rough grade boundaries, so it means that uh, out of the students that scored a grade 9 on this paper, they would have scored uh, 38 marks. Um, and so that gives you rough grade boundaries for the paper. I've also included on this uh, video, uh, on this page, if you like, uh, the breakdown uh, by uh, question uh, facility by question. Uh, that, this kind of tells you uh, how easy uh, each of the grades uh, so, for example, uh, somebody who got, scored a grade 7 uh, found the most complicated question on this paper, uh, question uh, 13. Uh, and it just gives you a kind of a, a, a national picture of how other students found this uh, back in 2018, uh, which I think is quite useful. Um, but uh, let me know if you, if you find it useful or not. Right, let's start the paper then. Okay, um, so we will get straight on. Um, so question one, here is a circle. <clears throat> uh, uh, circle the word that best describes the shaded part. Um, well, this would be a sector. Uh, so that's going to be the one I'm going to circle. Um, uh, I could see an argument if it wasn't shaded and asked for the line, that would be a chord. Uh, segment is uh, like a... a Sorry, I've done that the wrong way around completely. Um, I've talked myself out of it. Uh, sector is uh, like the sector of a pie chart, which I always get mixed up. Uh, segment is the correct one. Arc would be this outside line. Right, um, question three. Y is equal to one and a half times X. Uh, circle the ratio that is equivalent to Y to X. So uh, my method for this, uh, if we're the information we're given y is equal to uh, one and a half times x uh, so that means that y is equal to um, <coughs> one and a half is three over two uh, three over two x uh, i tend to say uh, so i'm going to say that y over x is equal to three over two uh, which gives me that uh, the ratio of y to x would be equal to three to two so I'm going 3 to 2. Okay, question 5. Uh, match each statement to its description. One has been done for you. So we've got the Fibonacci sequence done for us. Uh, so uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. They're doubling each time, so that means that's a geometric progression. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So they're all going up by 1s, so that would be an arithmetic sequence. Uh, 1, 3, 6. So uh, in effect, we're uh, this is the triangle numbers. Uh, just if you don't know, uh, that's the first triangle number, that's the second triangle number, the number of dots, third triangle number, and so on. Uh, cube numbers then, uh, cube numbers are the, sorry, this one is square numbers, and this one is cube numbers. Okay, uh, question seven. Uh, on three days, Ali throws darts at a target. Here are his results. Work out the diff two different estimates for the probability of Ali hitting the target. Uh, so I would uh, take this one as my most accurate uh, because we've uh, done the experiment the most times. Uh, so 54 out of 90. 
Uh, it doesn't say simplify it, but I will simplify it in a moment. Uh, the next one I'm going to use is the next accurate, the next one that's been done the most time, so 17 out of 40. Uh, right, I can cancel down by 18s, I believe. Let's just bring our calculator in. So, um, a 54, 54 out of 90. We'll simplify down by 18s. Yeah, so I'm going to go 3 over 5 and 17 out of 40. And I could have worked out um, any two probabilities based on either of the days would be absolutely fine. Uh, so I could have had 15 out of 20 and 22 out of 30. They would all be fine. Part B, which of your two answers is a better estimate for the probability of Ali hitting the target? Give reason for your answer. Uh, I'm going to go uh, this one. So I'm going to go that was 3 over 5. And the reason being... Uh, it is based on a larger, um, how am I going to phrase this, based on a, based on more results, based. So based on more results. Okay, uh, question nine. Uh, the length of each side of a regular pentagon is 8.4 centimeters to one decimal place. Complete the error interval for the length of one side. Uh, so in effect, uh, that means that X has got to be uh, uh, bigger than 8.35. Uh, bigger than or equal to, but less than uh, 0.5 bigger than this. Uh, sorry, 0 0.05 bigger than this. So that's going to be my error interval. Uh, so 8.35 less than or equal to the length is less than 8.45. Complete the error interval for the perimeter. So we've got a pentagon. So pentagon is 5. Uh, so I just need to multiply each of my values by 5. And I'll write them both in at the same time. Uh, so I'm typing it in this way on my calculator just to save me a bit of time. Uh, I'll explain why in a second. Uh, so uh, 41.75 and now I can just change that value there to a 4. 42.25. That looks more like a 6. 2.5. Okay, uh, question 11. Um, <clears throat> two ordinary dice are rolled. Uh, complete the tree diagram. First dice, less than three, more than three. Uh, so we've got two, one third there, so we're going to have two thirds here. And those will be true over here. One third and two thirds. Uh, one third and two thirds. Okay, part B, work out the probability that both dice land on a number less than three. So that's going to be this top branch here, which is going to be found by doing one third times by one third, which will give me one ninth. Okay, work out the probability that exactly one of the dice lands on a number less than three. Less than three, less than three. So that would be, let's change pen color for this. Um, that would be this branch and this branch. Right, so I want to do uh, one third times two thirds uh, plus one th uh, two thirds times one third. So I uh, um, could use my calculator. There's nothing wrong with that, uh, but it's going to be uh, two over nine times by two, which would be four over nine. Okay, uh, show that for x not being equal to minus 1, and it gives me a clue straight away, uh, that this simplifies to the form ax plus b, where a and b are integers. Okay, um, so I'm going to factorize. So um, if I factorize the top line, uh, this is the difference of two squares, so that would be x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 1. So uh, what I've done there is I've taken a factor. 
right before I talk. Uh, I've taken a factor of 8 out, and then I've got x squared minus 1, which is the difference of two squares, and that's going to be divided by uh, 4 lots of x plus 1. Um, and that links to this bit here, because that's saying that x can't be equal to minus 1, because that would be dividing by 0, uh, which is uh, uh, undefined. Um, so then I'm going to cancel that and that, which would give me, and also I'm going to simplify that and that to 2. So that's going to give me 2 open bracket x minus 1. So in that form that it's asked for, it's going to be uh, 2x minus 2. Right, um, question 15. Uh, 100 men and 100 women took a test. Um, and we've got their scores, we've got their median, their interquartile range, and their range. Uh, use this use this data, using this data, which statement must be true? Tick one box. So men had a higher average score than women. Uh, so we could, I mean, we haven't really got all of the averages, so that would be a difficult statement to, to make. But even from the median, that's not true. Um, men had a more consistent score than women, so men have a smaller interquartile range and a smaller range. So I would agree with that statement, but we'll work out the others. Uh, women had a higher score. Uh, we haven't got a maximum score. We have got the range, but that doesn't tell us what the smallest value or the largest value is, so that's not true. Uh, men had a lower score. Again, that one's not true, so we're going for that option. Okay. Um, Ball is thrown vertically upwards. The graph shows the height of the ball, the height of the ball above the ground after it is thrown. So it's thrown from a height of two meters, reaches a height of uh, what looks like uh, four point six, and then drops. Uh, for how many seconds is the ball at a height of more than two meters? Uh, so it starts there, ends there. So three seconds. Oh, height of more than two meters. That's technically the time it spends at two uh, at two meters or greater. So um, I think you could have two point nine, two point nine 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 nine. I would go three. Uh, part B. How many seconds is the ball at instantaneous? After how many seconds is the ball at instantaneous rest when it is in the air? So that's going to be this time here which is 1.5 seconds. Right. Uh, work out the average speed of the ball when it is moving downwards. So the average speed when it is moving downwards. Uh, so in effect, I want the gradient of that purple line. And I've not drawn that very neatly, but you, you get the idea. So let's just look. So we go into a height of uh, 4.6. And in a time of uh, between 1.5 and 3.5. Uh, so um, our average speed is going to be the change in x, or we can do uh, distance divided by time. Uh, same thing in this case. Uh, so uh, distance was uh, 4.6. And then the change in time was uh, 3.5. Uh, minus 1.5. Let me just double check those figures. Yeah, I'm fairly confident with that. Uh, so that's going to be 2, so it's going to be 2.3. Okay, question 19. Um, a pentagon is made from a square and an isosceles triangle. Uh, work out the perimeter of the pentagon. Okay, so let me imagine cutting it there. That would create a 90 degree angle, and we want to work out this length here. This angle would be 35, and then this distance here would be 6. Uh, so we're going to be using a bit of trig to work out that length. I'm just trying to see. We're not given the total height anywhere. Uh, so uh, if this is a trig, this is the angle. We want this side here, which would be the hypotenuse, and we're given the adjacent uh, so our trig ratio that involves um, a H and an A is the cos ratio, uh, which is cos of the angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I rearrange that, that means that H is going to be equal to A divided by C. 
So um, if I, I'll, I'll do this how I can call it H for now, that's not an issue. I'm just gonna re-label it uh, X, but it doesn't really matter. So six divided by cars of 35. Right, um, I'm going to use my calculator in a second to do that. I'm going to actually want 2H. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say that um, the perimeter is going to be equal to uh, 12 times 2. Actually, 12 times 3 because all those dimensions are 12. 12 times 3, that's that length there, uh, plus 2 lots of H. Right, and I'm going to say that 6 divided by cos uh, 35, uh, let's just check my calculator, is in degrees. It's going to be that. I want to double that, and I want to add on um, 12 times by 3, which gives me a total perimeter of uh, 50.649. So, uh, so I'm going to go uh, 50.65. Uh, the reason being, I like to go one, uh, either one decimal place more than the answer or uh, one uh, significant figure more. And we've got 125, so I want to go to four significant figures. Uh, but uh, let me just check the mark scheme. And yeah, the mark scheme says accept anything between uh, 50.6 up to uh, 50.65. So anything rounded in between will be absolutely fine. Okay, uh, question 21. Uh, Liz and Tia are walking towards the shop along different straight paths. The diagram shows their position at 2 p.m. Okay, assuming they walk at the same pace, who will arrive at the shop first? You must show your working. Uh, okay, uh, so we need to work at uh, this distance here, which I'm going to call x for now. Uh, and we are using uh, non-right angle trig. Uh, we're going to be using the cos rule. So, um, so a squared is going to be equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. And I'll label those if I need to, if that's helpful for anyone. B, C, and A. Right, I'm just going to substitute in then and say that x squared then is going to be equal to uh, 60 squared plus 80 squared minus 2 times 60 times 80 times cos of 75. So that's going to be equal to... 60 squared plus 80 squared uh, minus 2 times 60 times 80 times cos of uh, 75. I'm just trying to double check everything as I'm typing it in. Uh, so uh, 7515.337 dot 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 show that I've not rounded. Uh, so x would be equal to the square root of that. So 86.691 one dot 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 dot. Who will arrive at the shop first? Liz. Um, so I'll say as 86.69 is greater than 80, Liz. So in fact, Liz walks at a faster speed than Tia. Does this affect your answer to part A? How does this affect your answer to part A? Uh, it doesn't, as it just means Liz would arrive there quicker. So, um, no change as Liz will be even quicker. Okay, um, solid X and Y are similar. Uh, X has a volume of 64 centimeters cubed. Y has a volume of 343 centimeters cubed. The surface area of X is 
176 work out the surface area of y okay um so <coughs> uh so the the volume surface area is uh, sorry the volume scale factor has to be in the ratio of um let's go x y the volume scale factor has got to be 64 to 343 so we want the uh, length scale factor is going to be the cube root of that so uh, the cube root on my calculator is uh, 64 which should give us 4 to uh, Three, four, three, oh, three, four, three, three, four, three, put that to seven. Uh, so the area scale factor would be 16 to 49. Um, and we've got X is 176. So 176 uh, divided by 16 gives us as our scale factor. So uh, if we times by 11, 539. Right, uh, question 35. Venn diagram shows us some information about 150 students. Um, so uh, the universal set is 150 students. Uh, C is equal to students who study chemistry. P is students who study physics. Okay, we've got two missing values. Uh, the probability that a physics student is chosen also, the probability that a physics student chosen at random also studies chemistry is 5 over 12. Okay, so that means that uh, work out the probability that the student does not study. What is the probability that the student does? Okay, right, so we, we're going to start by working out x. Uh, to do that, I'm going to say that um, x over... 47 plus x must be equal to uh, 5 over 12. So that means that this has to be a multiple of 12. Um, so what I'm going to say is um, in effect times by n. So let's look at some of the options then. Uh, so first of all, uh, it's got to be a number bigger than uh, 47. Uh, so it could in theory be uh, 60. Uh, but 60 wouldn't work because... Um, so let, let's just say that if n was equal to 5, uh, we couldn't have... Um, <coughs> uh, 13 over 60 wouldn't work. 13 over 60 is not equal to, uh, because uh, for that to be 60, uh, x would need to be 13, does not equal 5 over 12. Uh, so let's say if n was equal to 6, what would we have? Uh, let's just check. So 47 times by... Uh, 4... Up slightly there. Uh, 12 times by 6 would equal 72. And then uh, 72 minus 47 would be equal to 25. And then I'd leave 25 over 72 would be equal to uh, no, it wouldn't. Okay, um, so and I've just realized that I've been doing this as a chemistry and also chose physics. Uh, so I've got the right idea, but I've, um, I've, I've been using the wrong numbers. Uh, so what I need to change is not a huge amount, to be fair. Uh, so that should have been 35. Uh, 
uh, to be looking at. My pen's playing. Right, um, 35 plus x. Uh, so if we tried five first of all, uh, that would actually give us, oh, let's rewind this a bit. Uh, 35, um, so uh, 35 times 12 would be 60. 15 over 60, and 15 over 60 does simplify nicely to not what we wanted it to. That's because it's 25, not 15. So uh, if n was 5, that would create uh, 60 as the denominator. Um, and then uh, 35 take away 60 is 25. Uh, so that would be 5 over 12, which is equal to 5 over 12. So that means that x must be equal to 25. And then we can work out y now because all of them need to add up to uh, 150. So y is going to be equal to 150 uh, minus uh, x uh, minus 47 minus 35, which would give us uh, 150 uh, minus 25 minus 47 minus 35. That would give us y as 43. So uh, if x is 25 and y is 30, 43, work out the probability that a student so one of the 150 students is picked at random. Work out the probability that the student does not study either chemistry or physics. So that would be 43. Um, and I don't think that simplifies down. So I'm going to go 43 out of 150. Okay, uh, question 27, uh, prove that uh, 2.75 reoccurring converts into, okay, uh, so I'm going to say that x is equal to 2.75 reoccurring, so I'm going to multiply by a power of 10 to make my decimal pattern overlap, uh, so I'm just going to times by 10, so 27.55 uh, reoccurring, so now if I take them away from each other, that would give me 9x is equal to uh, so uh, 27.5 minus 2.7 uh, 24.8 right so technically then x is going to be equal to 24.8 over 9 uh, which is going to be the same as 248 over 90, which is going to be equal to 124 over 45. Okay, and that's the end of the paper. Right, um, so before I sign off, so again, um, just bringing you back to that table. Uh, so again, uh, rough grade boundaries for that paper uh, can be found here. Um, so hopefully uh, you are on track for where you want to be um, and then question by uh, uh, question by difficulty uh, if you like um, we can see uh, which uh, if for example you're a grade six student um, the lowest average score on that, that paper was the Venn diagrams question uh, followed by the uh, the uh, the simplifying one, uh, where we've got that um, difference of two squares in there. Um, and not that it's overly interesting, I uh, just find it a bit geeky. Uh, if you actually look, grade six students found uh, question uh, 25 the hardest, but then grade nine students found uh, question 13 the hardest. Uh, just a slight difference there. Okay, um, so I hope you found that useful. Uh, thank you very much for your time in listening. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or feedback, feel free to type them into the chat, and I will get back to you fairly quickly. Uh, thanks again for watching, and uh, subscribe if you like.